from each other. Right after your title win, you said, look, I don't want to think about anything else. I just want to take it and enjoy it. Yeah. What, what have the last couple of weeks been like for you? Uh, it's been amazing. It's just been incredible. Uh, I didn't ever realize that there was such a big difference between the number one contender and being the champion, but it's just been a crazy journey. And uh, the last two weeks have been pure bliss and letting it all soak in. It's finally starting to hit me. So it's pretty exciting. How many times have you gone back and watched the fight? I've watched the fight once. Yeah. And what was your evaluation as you watched it? Um, you know, it was, I think, the day after the fight, and there was still a lot going on, so it was kind of, I tried to take it in, but um, I guess, you know, I, I was looking at it, and I was like, yeah, you know, she really didn't do anything that I didn't expect, so I was really excited about that. Um, I wish that I was able to create a little bit more opportunity a little bit sooner. I think maybe if I would have gone for it that, um, you know, I could have opened some things up, but... You know, in hindsight, she's just she's still a really dangerous person. So she's someone that when when push comes to shove, you have to pay the woman respect. So, um, you know, I, I played my cards carefully, and luckily, I gave myself enough time to get that that choke in at the at the very end. Um, so, yeah. You talked about the massive changes. What's the biggest change? Is it recognition, respect, or your own personal feelings inside? What is the biggest change? I feel like everyone's uh, perspective has changed a little bit towards me, and everyone's been a little bit. A little bit nicer like there was cupcakes waiting in my room for me today when I showed up I mean I never had that before so that's great and um, and then just just my whole look on the on the sport and everything is just was such an important thing for me to accomplish and so I just feel much more fulfilled I guess the big question that everybody wants to know and obviously you have been champion for only for a few weeks but who is next have you had a chance to think about it are you even at that point yet were you thinking about it I know that there's a lot of uh, really top contenders, a lot of girls in the division that are chomping at the bit. I think I've been called out by everyone probably in the top six, if not, you know, potentially the top ten. So they're all gunning for me, and they're all dangerous, and they all have their, their different attributes to, to bring to the table. So I think my job as a champ is just to stay ready for whoever. You know, I'm, I'm just going to stay in the gym, and I have to be able to beat every single one of them. So. I think the general consensus is that you're either going to get a top contender like, say, an Amanda Nunes or a Kat Zingano, or they may go with a big money fight like a Ronda Rousey or, say, a Holly Holm. Do you have any kind of preference between who you go for or you don't really care? Honestly, at this point, I don't really care. Um, I think that I need to just be ready to to, ha to handle whatever is thrown my way, you know, and I, I don't think it's my job as a champion to pick who's next. It's not really what the champion does. A champion fights whoever they say is next and whoever's earned that position. Have you started to think about a time frame yet? Because I think that may be key in, in what comes next for you. Yeah, um... I've been kind of tossing around the idea if, if, if it would be possible to fight at UFC 100, uh, 200, that would be awesome, but um, I really have no idea what the UFC has in mind for that. You know, I, I think they already have a couple title fights, so it may not be realistic, but, you know, like I said, I'll stay ready. Um, if, that, if that's something that becomes an option or available, then great. If not, then we'll just see what's next. We were talking to Coach Winkle John on the program, and he mentioned that Holly sort of did you a favor by giving you a shot at the title, even though there was a big money fight with Ronda Rousey coming up. Does a part of you feel like, because you mentioned they want an immediate rematch, does a part of you feel like you owe some kind of favor back to Holly giving her that immediate rematch? I don't think anyone did me a favor by fighting. I think that they didn't want to sit out as a champion for a year. Mm. And if it wasn't going to be Ronda, then obviously I was next in line. So I don't feel like they did it only for me. Obviously, she went in there thinking she was going to beat me and she was comfortable taking that fight. And that's a risk that she took and it didn't pay off. But she didn't do it for me. Mm. <laughs> she did it for herself and her camp did it for herself. And for unfortunately for her, it didn't work out this time. So I don't think people do favors by fighting you know that's that's what she wanted that's what she she said i want to be active i want to be fighting if ronda can't be in there then i want to get in there with someone else so that you know she did that for herself just on the subject of being active if you're presented with an opportunity to say wait for a big money fight let's say ronda rousey does come back in november and the ufc says we want to hold you until that fight would you be open to waiting or would you rather be more active and have fights in between I think it's a long time to wait, um, but I've had eight month layoffs before. I think the last you know, last fight that I had was um, end of July, so it was already you know I've I've wait, waited that long before. It's not an, a strange thing for me to do, but ideally, I think I'd like to fight one more time before. What, what do you think about Ronda? Do you think if she's ready that she should be the automatic selection, or do you think that she should have to fight Holly again to come back up? Like, there's a lot of talk about you and Katsugano as being a, a, a fight that we all want to see? Honestly, I don't know. 
Um, I really don't know how, how that should all unfold. And I, I don't want to be the one to say like who fights who I just, yeah. I just have to be ready to fight whoever the UFC deems is necessary. And whoever is the next number one contender, who's the next best fighter. I really don't know. I haven't, I haven't thought about that, honestly. It's funny because you're right as a champion, I mean, you got to take whoever they give you, but it seems like your power right now is maybe higher than it's ever been to be able to call your own shot. So, I mean, is there any thought about saying, no, that's the fight I want. Give me that one. You know, I think I, I, as a champ, I just want to take the mindset that in my mind, in order for me to be ready, I feel like I need to be ready to fight whoever. And I don't want to be so fixated on one person like, oh, I need this fight or I need that one because a lot of times it just doesn't work out that way. So it's like, I just want to be ready in my mind for anyone whether it's Rhonda, Holly, Kat, Amanda, Juliana, like all those are very possible candidates for, for the next fight. And it's just, I don't want to be fixated on one person and think that that's what's going to happen. And then all of a sudden have that mental shift. It's like, I'm looking at all these girls and saying they, they could, any one of them could step up and be next. So I have to be ready to be A, B, C, D, E, F, G at any time. So I'm just trying to stay ready in that, in that mind frame. I just want to go back in time a little bit. It wasn't that long ago you were supposed to fight for the title yourself and you lost the shot. You spoke a little bit about the fact that you were contemplating retirement. I just want to know, how close did you get to retiring at that, at that part of your career? It wasn't that long ago. Right. Um, I was at a very frustrated point in my career, to be honest, and I kind of said some things in the heat of the moment. And I don't feel like I was ready to retire. Obviously, I don't feel like physically that I didn't have it mentally. I didn't have it emotionally. I felt like I still was in it to win it, but... I was questioning at the time whether I would ever get a title shot and that's what I was competing for is to be the best in the world and when I thought that that wasn't going to be an option for me then I found myself wondering well, what the hell am I doing then and that's honestly where I was at was that the opportunity didn't meet my desire at the time my drive and desire I felt like maybe those weren't I wasn't going to be able to bridge that gap through no matter how hard I tried or how many fights I won so then it was like am I doing should I really continue doing this then so uh once things changed and those opportunities began to open up again I was like great this is exactly what I wanted I'm just curious where you stand with the UFC because when we spoke to Dana White about you potentially thinking about retirement he sort of said that if you're thinking about retirement then you should probably retire it seemed like a bit of a stalemate at that time have you sort of I don't know if there's anything to rectify but have you spoken to the UFC about that and how are things now well, I'm still a woman, so um, at the end of the day, when I'm scorned, I can be pretty, pretty, uh, pretty pissy. So uh, I was a little bit pissy at the time, and I made some comments, and I think he just kind of thought. Usually when a fighter says they're thinking about retirement, it's because they feel like they don't have it anymore. So I think through the media, when it's getting translated, he's re reading Misha Tate retirement. He's like, well, if you're going to say retirement, then that probably means that you should retire because when fighters usually talk about it, it means they don't want to fight anymore. They don't have it anymore. Well, I think that obviously wasn't the case and I think that that's just how he interpreted it through the media so um, we've talked since then we're on a, we have a great relationship right now everything's going awesome and uh, yeah this is a much better position than I was in you know four or five months ago <laughs> I'm just curious extreme couture obviously was one of the best gyms around but not many titles lately coming back to the gym how much did it mean to you to be able to bring that title back to the coaching stuff because it c does kind of feel like it was a little bit forgotten you know there's some big gyms out there like aka and Jackson Winkler John not many not many people talking about extreme couture. How did it feel to bring the belt back there? Great, because um, I think my gym is highly underrated, and I think the coaches there are highly underrated, and it doesn't get a lot of light shed on it, and I think that it's time that the focus shifts a little bit. I mean, there's a lot of other great gyms, but Extreme Couture is on fire right now, and we have a lot of amazing fighters coming out of there, and it's the best gym I've ever trained at. So it's really exciting for me to be able to shed a little bit of light on that. And, uh, you know, a little bit of light on Brian's coaching and uh, Robert Follis's coaching and my, my uh, striking coach, Jimmy Gifford. All amazing, amazing, uh, important pieces in my camp. And I'm very happy that they get a little bit of credibility. Where are you keeping the belt? Where am I keeping the belt? In my room. On my bed. <laughs> Let me ask you, what's the weirdest place you've ever worn the belt? Do you ever go to the supermarket with the belt, wear it around the house, anything like that? Uh, no, I feel like I'd feel a little bit silly if I just was prancing around with a big belt on. And I, I'm, I honestly, I, when I go out, I like to fly under the radar. I don't like to be spotted if I can help it. I'm a little bit shy, honest, honestly. So it's still kind of, uh, it's still kind of awkward to me sometimes when people get so excited to meet me and I get a little bit nervous myself. You know, their, their nervous energy makes me nervous. So I'm like, ah, like, you know, I don't know how to respond to people when they get so excited. So I just kind of 
put my sunglasses on and I like to try to fly under the radar. So I'm definitely not going to the store or anywhere with a big old belt around my waist. <laughs> Reflecting on the uh, the last three to three and a half years when you were Strike Force champion, how did, how is the journey? Um, do you think that that's made it sweeter to get to being the UFC champion now? The, the adversity of having to, to go through what you've gone through over the last three years. Yeah, um, my journey has been crazy and I've gone through a lot of adversity and I've been down and kicked while I was down and, and uh, you know, everyone has that story in life where they've hit the lowest of low and they have to either figure it out and get back to the top or not and just mine happens to be publicized. So <laughs> it's been a it's been a long journey. Actually, this month, the 25th of this month will be my 10th year anniversary of fighting. I had my first fight 10 years ago. So it's kind of, uh, um, what's the right word for it? It's kind of that serenity of it all it's just kind of makes sense it's like really almost a 10 years later to the dot it was uh, that I captured my my world title in the UFC just one last quick question Misha before you go uh, Holly Holm uh, her coach has talked about how she's been having a hard time sleeping since losing her title I'm just wondering if there's something that you can relate to obviously we we're talking about strike force when you lost your belt and if you would have any advice to Holly Holm yeah um it's hard. It's going to take time. And uh, just know that you'll, you'll get through it. And, and there's a way to look at the glass either half full or half empty. It just really boils down to something as simple as that. You have to look at yourself and say, yes, I did this. I messed up. But can you learn and become better from it? And that's the, that's the difference. That's the mindset, mindset of a champion is someone who will say, I can learn from this and I can become better for it. Because when you're winning all the time, you think what you're doing is working. It obviously is working. And then when you lose, you figure out, well, that's where I needed to improve. That's where I needed to get better. So, yeah, if she can take that and, and work on it with her coaches and get better, then she'll be a more well-rounded mixed martial artist and she'll be a better fighter for the loss. So, Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.